Hi, this is Brian from Brain District. In this tutorial, we will be exploring compositing. Compositing is the art of combining or superimposing two or more images together. In this example, we will be combining a photograph from the real world and 3D imagery created in Ray Supreme. We will carry this out with the help of the Shadow Catch material. The shadow catch material is a special type of material for special effects. When you use the shadow catch material, it does not have the typical visibility you expect on an object. However, it will allow shadows to be cast upon it. In this way, we can have a background image show through, and shadows will appear to be cast on top of the background image as if it existed in three dimensions. Using this technique is much faster and easier than creating an entire scene in 3D from scratch. In the following process, we will insert a 3D object and shadows on top of a photographed image. First, click on the Objects button in the browser menu at the right side of the screen. We'll insert a cube into the scene by double-clicking on the cube heading. Now we'll switch to the Object Editor by choosing Object Editor from the View Selector menu at the top of the screen. If your cube is selected, it will be highlighted in blue in the viewport, and we can see its node graph in the object graph. This gives us access to the parameters of the cube we created. We will now select the shape node by clicking on it. When we click on the shape node, its parameters are displayed at the right side of the screen in the nodes tab. Here we will select the type pull down menu and choose polygon. When we choose Polygon, another type menu becomes available where we can specify the type of polygon we're looking for. We will now select the Type pull-down menu and choose Plane. This changes our default triangle polygon into a plane, which is more suitable for our needs here in this exercise. This plane will be an infinite surface that we will use to act as the ground. Next, once again in the Object Graph, Let's click on the Transform node. The Transform node controls the position, rotation, and scale of our object. We want to change the orientation of the plane so that it acts as the ground that we will cast shadows onto. So we will set the X rotation value to 90. The X rotation parameter is indicated by the red framed text entry field. Now we will go back to the object graph and this time select the material node of our object. This node is named cube material because our original object was a cube. With the material node chosen, we will select shadow catch from the preset pull down menu. Now we will switch back to scene view by choosing scene view from the view selector menu at the top of the screen. Now back in Scene View, we will click on the World button in the Browser menu at the right side of the screen. Now in the World Settings Browser, we will expand the Background Image heading and click on the Select button to browse for a photo to use as the background image. Next, we need to configure the camera properly. You'll notice that we see the image in the background of the viewport, but we want to take and manipulate the aspect ratio of our image. We will click on the camera button in the browser menu. Under the general heading, we will change the pixel width and pixel height values in the text entry fields to match the pixel dimensions of our image, which happens to be 1024 by 768. So we'll enter 1024 for pixel width and 768 for pixel height. Next we need to select a view angle, which is the camera parameter that correlates with the real world view angle of the camera. This view angle is relative to the focal length of the lens of the camera. We want to match the view angle of our virtual camera within Ray Supreme 
as closely as possible to the view angle of the real world camera that we took the picture with for best results. This can be done by feel, so you can adjust the view angle until the plane in the viewport matches the overall road surface perspective in the viewport. In this example, I used a view angle of 74.5. I also changed the camera looks at parameter to a Z value of 1.5. In case you are following along with the image I used and have adjusted the camera to an odd position, you can use undo or key in the camera values I have shown here in my camera parameters. Once you have a particular view angle figured out for a particular lens, you can reuse this value for other photos taken with that same lens. With a zoom lens, it's important to keep in mind that changing the zoom will affect the view angle, but the zoom at minimum and the zoom at the maximum should be consistent values, respectively. If you use your own image and set up your own unique scene, bear in mind that this is a subjective thing and that you will get better at this and more comfortable given practice. From here, we can place any primitive in the scene. Click on the Objects button in the Browser menu and double-click on the Sphere heading in the Object Templates browser to create a sphere. Now I'll select the Move tool and position the sphere by hand. From here, we will move to the World settings by clicking on the World button in the Browser menu at the right side of the screen. Under World settings, under the Light heading, we will choose Procedural Sky under the Mode pull-down menu. Also make sure that the Enable Ambient checkbox is unchecked. This disables the default lighting in the scene so that the lighting will only be handled by the procedural sky. The skylight system works based on the principle that the location of the sun in the sky at any particular time and location on the planet can be calculated. Furthermore, the resulting shadows from this information can be calculated. For this exercise, I chose the Jakarta, Indonesia preset. For this particular image, this setting worked relatively well in that the shadows look accurate. There's one more adjustment that I need to make, however, and that is the direction in which the shadows fall. The skylight system calculates great shadows, but I need to compensate for the direction in which the camera was pointed. I corrected for this by entering 46 degrees for the Z-rotation parameter, which is framed in blue. From here, our work is done, and all we need to do is click on the Open Render Window icon at the top of the screen. Now just click on the Render Image icon at the upper left corner of the Render dialog. That's it. Now we have realistic shadows and a 3D object rendered on top of the photograph.